Good morning. Good morning. So, okay. Come on in. I'm so glad that you're all here this morning. I say all, and you're nicely spaced out. This has been a very odd time, hasn't it? Um, nothing's normal, or at least it's a new normal, and we're gonna have to get used to another new normal routine here on Sunday mornings. So, first of all, we are all masked bandits, and that will stay this way at least for a long time. I expect at least a year, but we'll all see how it goes. What we're going to be doing in our space, as you can see, is quite different. We have to be spaced out. We have to make sure that people are separated from each other, that everyone's masked all the time. We're only allowed a certain number of people in the building at any given time. So the most we're allowed right now is 50 people, no matter what we're doing. And yet, as you can see, when we're spaced out, that may not even be that many people here for a worship service. But I'm so glad that we're able to be together. I think about you every day. I try to make sure that I haven't forgotten your faces in all of that time. For those of you who've been joining us for Bible studies and book studies or morning prayer or any of the other virtual things we've been doing, I've had the great opportunity to see you without masks. But for a lot of other people in our parish, I haven't had that chance. So I'm so glad that we're going to be able to do this. A couple of people noticed yesterday that the hymn boards are still set up for the last service we had here. And I was toying with the idea of taking it all down. I thought, you know, I'm going to leave it because there's a, there's, it's a symbol to us that we have been apart for all of this time. So I'm so glad that we're going to be able to do this now together again. Having said that, I have to give you a few instructions, things like, I'm sure when you arrive, the, if you're not already a greeter, a greeter told you that you need to go to your pew, you have to stay in your pew. You're not supposed to go anywhere until it's communion time or you're leaving. Another thing is, we, you can see arrows in places, you can see tape on the floor. So we've got to keep our distance um, no matter what we're doing while we're here. Good news is, if you need to go to the bathroom, it's still available. So just, you'll go out the door and it's only the universal washroom, not the men's and ladies' washroom, so just go into that one. There are instructions on what to do while you're in the bathroom. I know most of you are thinking, I haven't had to worry about that since kindergarten, and that's probably true, but we live in a new time. So please, please take heed of that and please follow those directions. The other thing that's new is that, uh, as you can see, we don't have printed materials anymore, so everything will be right up there, everything you need to know, you just have to look up there, it will be there in large print, and hopefully it will be easy for you to see. Another new thing, as you know, we've been having recorded services that have been posted every week. Well, this service is also being recorded, it will be posted after the service is over, and starting next week, Jeff and other technology willing, we will have a live stream service, which means that the entire service will go out to the world as it's taking place on our YouTube channel, and it'll also be recorded and always be there for people to see anytime they want. And after next Sunday and beyond, that will continue to be the case. There may be a few exceptions. There might be times when we actually record a service and then put it on instead of live streaming, but for probably forever, we will be live streaming our services. I will tell you that aspects of our worship will be recorded and some will be live. So between myself and Michael, we will be uh, doing some live prayers and so on, but you will see recordings. Recordings of messages, recordings of readings, etc. Some people are going to be happy to come here to do readings, and they will, but others will do it from home, and then we will incorporate them into the worship service. The fact that we are doing it this way on PowerPoint will actually allow us to be able to do that. I'm trying to think of what else I need to say. Other than, we'll begin our worship, but I wanted to say this. Today is Remembrance Sunday. So, normally, Rick would be processing the wreath up to us, but one of the differences now is that we're not allowed to have processions. So we will have our acts of remembrance at the beginning of the service today, and Rick is, is here today to help us do that, and I'm so, so grateful that he's here to do that. But I also want to say, before we get started, um, we are also remembering all those uh, in, in Canada and around the world who have suffered from COVID-19, those who have died. 
those who have been apart from their loved ones while their loved ones died, and the fact that they've had to suffer in at least two different ways. And I also want to say um, that we're remembering all the people who have made our lives possible through this pandemic, uh, that we want to give our thanks to them, whether they were you know, our doctors and nurses, whether they're other frontline EMS workers, whether they are people in our grocery stores or people who make sure that we're fed or clothed or have power or all the other things that we are so uh, lucky to have where we are. But we're going to remember them as well today because it's been a challenge. We've gone through it so far, and I know we'll continue to do that, but without everyone pulling together, I don't think it is possible. So we're gonna remember all of those people today. I should also tell you, you're not allowed to sing, so even if you know the words, please don't sing. You can sing in your own head. Sure days ago, 
We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Fields. Can you all please stand? Please respond with everything that you see on the screen that's in bold print. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. They were young as we are young. They served giving freely of themselves. To them we pledge amid the winds of time to carry their torch and never forget. We will remember them. We will remember them.
right? Not being selfish or unkind, which blocks the flow. But it's about being in that flow and making sure that, that good happens because love is shared in a very real way in our world. And that's what contemplative prayer, that's what meditation is all about. You know, when we meditate, we're trying to quiet our mind and to let go of all of those thoughts that we have all the time. And just by going through that practice of letting go and letting go and, and allowing, we release that love and we become people who are able to let go. So instead of grasping and holding on to things and thinking about ourselves and what's in it for us, and, you know, what do we need? It's about releasing that flow and allowing it to move out into our world. And I think that when we do that, it impacts others. You know, when we pray for others, we're releasing that love into the world and it makes a difference. It makes a difference to them, it makes a difference to us, the prayers. Um, and it's akin to, in my mind, to you know, what some scientists call spooky action at a distance. You know, that something that happens here can impact something over here. And there's a lot more going on in our world than we can see or that we're aware of. And so Jeff's prayer here can have an impact on others over here. I think one of the things that we sometimes get um, entrenched in is this idea that, yeah, Jesus was going around and physically healing lots of people. And so we get caught up in this idea that prayer is supposed to lead always to some kind of physical healing. Yet every single example of Jesus' healing is it doesn't seem to give a focus on the physical healing part. I mean, it's happening. You know, someone who's blind is no longer blind. Someone who was lame is no longer lame. But really, every single one of those stories, even regardless of the fact that it's all kinds of different healing, is that there's a spiritual healing always, and there's a community healing always. And so we sometimes, I think, get so focused on the physical part that we assume that that's what Jesus wanted us to focus on, right? That if we just pray for physical healing, that would be what would come about. Yet what Sue Ann was highlighting with the Lord's Prayer is that Jesus was saying, God's will be done. So we're trying to presuppose, we already know what God wants from anything we do and every prayer we make. And we lose sight of the fact that maybe what Jesus really is most concerned about is our spiritual well-being. Not that he's not worried about our physical being or about our mental being, but he believes that our physical part of our life is going to be a rather brief part as, as compared to our eternal life, where our spirit, our soul, is going to be more important. It's going to be something that's supposed to last forever. And so he seems to always be more concerned about whether we are spiritually healthy or not. Whether all is well with our souls. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry, but now I want to sing a song. <laughs> Good for you. I'm not, I'm not confident enough to sing. Well done. So, why do we say so many word prayers then? And I think part of it can be chalked up to the fact that saying words helps us get in the right state of mind. Like, you know, Sue Ann was saying, we're, we're having to let go of things. Well, one easy way to do that is to get some words in our heads and in our hearts that are going to help lead us to a path where we can open that flow. And I think when we are in church, for instance, we say all those prayers and we do that and it helps us to open that flow. But if we get too caught up in just the words, we can lose sight of, I think, that whole idea of being spiritually whole and allowing that flow to happen. Because we're worried about, am I saying the right words and are these the words that will, you know, connect me with God instead of just knowing that just being in the right frame of mind and allowing that flow to happen means that we will be in relationship with God. And I really think that is what Jesus wanted most from us when we were praying. I mean, so we had talked about the fact that Jesus was in the wilderness and, you know, he couldn't have been praying all the time, right? If he was, he probably would have, you know, died from talking all the time. But 
Speaking of which, I should probably stop talking and let's go ahead and take something <laughs> But my feeling is, is that while he was in the wilderness, he was praying also by just being present with God and not always talking with God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And those prayers that we pray in church have other purposes too, right? When we pray the, the creeds or the call lives, we're actually learning a lot of theology and, and sort of the essence of the Christian faith. And when we pray our Eucharistic prayer, our communion time, uh, we're remembering Jesus as we are called to do and remembering the importance of being in communion with each other. And when we're praying our in intercessory prayers for others, we are remembering those in our world who, who are in need, who need us to pray for them and to be attentive to them. And we are sharing our love with them and then hopefully leaving the church building and going out and making an active difference in their lives. The other thing about prayer is that there is a lot of research that supports the idea, idea that it's good for us in many ways. So I'm going to share some of that with you. So uh, one of the things is that when we share our problems, our concerns with God, it actually has a beneficial uh, uh, effect on our being, just as if we had gone to therapy. Um, so they're just that talking, just putting our concerns or, or even our joy into words uh, makes a difference. I don't want to bad enough therapist, but I think God's wise or even the most brilliant therapist. So it might even be better. <laughs> I hope so. uh, prayer is one of the best things that we can do for our brain. So people who pray regularly have thicker gray matter in their prefrontal cortex, right? That's the part of the brain responsible for focus and uh, willpower. And in the anterior cingulate cortex, that's responsible for compassion and empathy. There's actually an increase in the gray matter in that part of our brain, which is beneficial and helps us to be more empathetic and more compassionate people. Prayer and meditation also reduce our responsiveness in our amygdala. That's the part of the brain that's responsible for fear and anger. So prayer and meditation, it, it increases um, gray matter in the helpful areas and it decreases the activity in areas that are really not all that beneficial to us because they, they create our fear and, and, and our icky feelings. Right, so it, prayer makes us better people. It also does wonderful things like it lowers our blood pressure and it improves our overall health and our ability to fight disease and to heal from injury. So prayer is good. And prayer brings us close to our good God. And so it's difficult for us to understand as human beings why sometimes it feels like when we reach out to God for help, we're not getting that help, or at least we're, we're not getting it in the way that we want to. But we are growing in relationship with God, and we are creating good in our world, and we are promoting that flow of love that God would have us create. And so while we may not fully understand the mystery of prayer, we know that prayer is a good thing, and that God calls us to grow a relationship with God by praying. Now you know why I let Sue Ann tell you on the science part. I recognize the words, but I couldn't explain that all to you. We hope this has been helpful, and we definitely would love to continue dialoguing with all of you at any time you want. But this is going to conclude our series now. And uh, you'll be seeing more of us for sure, uh, and we'll be talking about different things. But between now and then, we're praying for you, and we're praying for our world, and we're praying for all of us to have the best relationship we can have with God all the time. Lots of love from us to you, and love from Lucy too. May God bless you. God bless you. Take care of each other.
Let us affirm our faith as we say together. We believe in God, who is love, and who has given the earth to all people. We believe in Jesus Christ, who came to heal us and to free us from all forms of oppression. We believe in the Spirit of God, who works in and through all who are turned towards the truth. We believe in the community of faith, which is called to be the service of all people. We believe in God's power to transform and transfigure, fulfilling the promise of a new heaven and a new earth, where justice and peace will flourish. Amen. Men standing on the hill, whatever we prefer to go to the presence of the people. They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. In peace let us pray to God, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. Lord, hear our prayer. For civilian women, children, and men, whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. Lord, hear our prayer. For peacemakers and peacekeepers, we seek to keep this world secure and free. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military, organizational, familial, and religious, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, especially for those we name at this time, either in silence or aloud. That the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Rest eternal ground unto them, O Lord. And let, let light perpetual shine upon them. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and whose names we will never know. Help us to seek peace and reconciliation throughout the world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honor the past, May we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite mercy. God welcomes all sinners and invites them to this table. Let us now confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. May the infinite grace of God have mercy upon you and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now I'm going to ask you to please stay where you are and share peace from where you are. Thank you.
Let us now pray together a prayer over the gifts. And let us pray these words. Gracious God, and God of constant love, you have guided your people in all times and ages. May we who offer you our praise today always be ready to follow where you lead. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, source of all being, we give you thanks and praise for your by your faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and one another to be your holy people, a sign of your presence in the world. When those we trust betray us, unfailingly you remain with us. When we injure others, you confront us in your love and call us to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak and those broken and alone, whom you have always welcomed home, making the first last and the last first. Therefore, we raise our voices with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Holy One. When Hagar was driven into the wilderness, you followed her and gave her hope. When Joseph was sold into bondage, you turned malice to your people's good. When you called Israel out of slavery, you brought them through the wilderness into the promised land. When your people were taken into exile, you wept with them by the river of Babylon and carried them home. Restore us, O God, let your face shine. At the right time, you sent your anointed one to stand with the poor, the outcast, and the oppressed. Jesus touched lepers and the sick and healed them. He accepted water from a woman of Samaria and offered her the water of new life. Christ knew the desolation of the cross and opened the way for all humanity into the redemption of your reconciling love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Loving and Holy One, recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you these gifts looking for the bread of tomorrow, therefore we proclaim our hope. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Pour out your Spirit on these gifts, that through them you may sustain us in our hunger for your peace. We hold before you all whose lives are marked by suffering, our sisters and brothers. When we are broken and cast aside, embrace us in your love. Restore us, O God, let your face shine. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O source of all life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Alleluia, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
just so that uh, everyone is ready and aware. I know most of you were here yesterday and you're aware of this, but so Rick will come up and Anna will come up and then you'll each be coming up from front to back. Please maintain proper physical distancing. When you come forward, I will give you the wafer and then please return to the side that you came from. If you're on this side, go this way. This side, go this way. I'll put it in your hand. Please move over to the X. Then remove your mask. Put the wafer in your mouth. Put your mask back on. Before you come up, please use the sanitizer. And on your way back to your seat, please use the sanitizer. We're all going to get it. This will become a normal routine eventually. So Rick, if you wouldn't mind sanitizing and coming forward first. Let us continue with the prayer after communion. Please stand. And let us pray together, saying, O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows, and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen.
So please stay in place after the blessing. Rick and I are going to exit the church and Rick is going to be ringing the bell 11 times. After he's finished ringing the bell, Michael will offer the dismissal and then I ask everyone to please depart who is not staying behind to clean. So, thank you. I want to say a huge thank you to Anna who is our new technology wizard at the computer screen. Um, it only gets harder after today, but she's going to nail this and everything's going to be wonderful. But I also wanted to thank her for all that she's been doing for the last six months to try to keep our children and youth connected and involved. And uh, she was doing that again yesterday during Synod, so I want to say thank you to Anna for all of that. Yeah. It's hard to see, as you all know, everything's being done sort of virtually, but we've been working really hard to try to figure out new ways to do things and ways to you know, remain connected and relevant, so we're trying our best, so bear with us, and if you have suggestions along the way, please offer. May our journey in life shine with a star's delight. May our days and our years weave together a wondrous tapestry. May our unfolding story dance with the grace of every blessing. Always and ever, may we rest in God. Always and ever, may God rest in us. Amen.
Please be seated. Just very briefly, uh, I see many of you Bible, well, I think none here, I think, but Bible study and morning prayer, so most of you will know. But for the rest of you, uh, this is my last Sunday here. Um, I, I've been uh, kidnapped by St. Christopher's in Burlington. So uh, thank you for the limited time I have uh, spent here, at least until March. It was quite a lot of it, but since then, not really. But I wish you well and the Lord's blessings to you. Let us go in peace to love and serve God's people. Thanks be to God.